Hi, it's JJ DiGeronimo, the president of Advancing Women in STEM and Tech Savvy Women, and today I'm here with Eden. She has had a tremendous trajectory in STEM, and today she's calling in from Berlin, Germany. Eden, thank you so much for joining us. Tell us a little bit about how you decided to pursue a mechanical engineering degree. My name is Eden, and I've been developing a technology called the subcomputer. I first got into mechanical engineering um, when I was, well, maybe about 10 years old. I didn't know necessarily that I wanted to do engineering, but I did realize I had this strong interest for renewable energy and for solar energy in particular. And so when I got my uh, degree in mechanical engineering at Princeton, I realized that I wanted to find a way to apply this knowledge. And the software is, uh, is, a, is a way that I've kind of really integrated my interest in solar energy and in making things um, to really have an impact on, on others. And so our technology helps to rotate solar panels in an affordable and, affordable and intuitive manner in the developing world. Wow, Eden, that is incredible. Tell me, how did you get from, you know, a solar panel car to a mechanical engineering degree to starting your own business? Because, you know, that's a huge leap. Did you have a lot of mentors and sponsors? And how, how did you get that going? I think it's definitely a very incremental, very gradual process. So no one person, you know, made the leap from research project to company. I think it was, I started this research project, I went online on Google, I looked at papers that people wrote, I looked up Wikipedia articles, and then I realized that I was really interested in this, so I emailed professors at universities asking them, you know, can I help you with your research, can I learn more about what you do, I went into their lab, I um, you know, joined their program, I helped them with their research, and then eventually when I got to a point where I was starting to come up with original ideas on my own, um, that was when I was able to finally be like, okay, I think I have the potential for you know, starting a company, starting a nonprofit around this one idea that I have. But it's a very incremental process and it happened over a number of years. So I've been working on the sun polluters since I was 16 years old and I'm 22 now. So it, it's been a very long journey and it's been really rewarding and it's not linear either. I've definitely had ideas that fail. Um, you know, I've had professors tell me, look, I just don't think what you're doing is important. I've had people tell me, like, you're too young. Uh, you need to go and finish your college degree first or, you know, you need to have all these qualifications first. So there are always obstacles um, and I think it's about really realizing that if this is something that's important to you, you're just going to go and do it anyway. Well, it sounds like you have done just that. And just by reading your bio and talking a little bit with you, you have been recognized several times in various ways for your work to date. What has been what some of the more rewarding aspects of all your hard work? So when we implement sun polluters, we do them in the developing world where a lot of these communities have never had access to electricity before. And I think some of the biggest um, you know, fans of our technology and some of the, the biggest supporters of what we do are people whose lives have been immediately impacted by having an extra 40% more electricity because their solar panels now rotate. And so you can imagine, you know, they are now able to charge three extra cell phones so that they can text their family when they're, they get off work. Um, or, you know, they now have a little bit more light so their children can study for an extra hour at night. And so having extra electricity when you're in the middle of an African village makes a big difference. And I think a lot of the people that have seen extra electricity, seen extra light, they're the people that really appreciate what we do the most. And to, to really know that that's happening because of something that I came up with, it's really exciting. I think it's absolutely amazing as a business owner myself to hear about you not only creating a product but also having global impact with that. Is there anything that you feel like looking back was really the turning point for you? I'm, I took some time off of college. Um, so I studied for two years at Princeton and then I received a fellowship called the Teal Fellowship to stop out of school for two years to work on the sun scooter full time. And I, I went back to Princeton after the fellowship ended. But having this freedom to finish sun scooter and, and get it to a point where I felt confident in building out a team and starting to scale our organization globally, um, you know, that took actually committing myself to the project full time. And I think a lot of us don't have an opportunity to do that. So I think a major turning point for me was realizing that if I really want this project to have any meaning and to have any impact, 
I need to be dedicated 100% to it. And that means taking some time off of school because school will always be there. School can wait. I think that's exciting, and for me, what that really means is you're not following society's plan. You basically are plowing, uh, plowing forward in a plan that makes sense for you, and I think that's great advice for women, young and old. Uh, what What's next for you? I mean, you've already accomplished so much before you've even hit 25. What is next for you? I think, I really hope that the Sun Scooter is just going to be the first thing that I do. Um, you know, I'm very interested in the intersection between hardware and software. Um, I want to continue using my interest in engineering um, and my passion for making things to help other people. And I think um, I want to continue to see what other kinds of businesses I can start, whether or not, or even if it is supposed to be a business at all. Um, if it's a nonprofit or I want to open source technology, like I think all I want is to get um, my ideas out there in the world and in a way that helps people. So I think that's what I'm going to focus on next. That's wonderful. And just in closing, what advice would you give young women considering to pursue a STEM degree or even start their own business? I think it's important to keep in mind that we're not all naturally inclined um, to, to, to lean to a certain field. So for me, I, uh, I think I got 54% on my fifth grade math test. So I'm not good at math. Um, I never was and I never will be, but, but what I am passionate about is making things. And I think engineering is more than just science and math. Engineering is about building something with your hands. Engineering is about putting it out there in the world so that people um, can experience it, people can see it, and they can change their lives. And I think if you really care about doing that, then don't let the fact that, you know, some quantitative score somewhere said that you were bad at science and math to stop you from going into STEM because I think um, if you really care about this field, you will find a way to make a difference even if the test scores say that you won't. I think this has been excellent. We really appreciate your time and thank you so much for joining us, Eden. Yeah, anytime.